Hey guys, I hope you're all doing really well. I'm actually starting this video in the evening because I wanted to share part of my evening skincare routine with you all. But I also am trying to get together a more me-made wardrobe at the moment. So I've been collecting the odd pattern that I like the look of um, and also I've been creating some more of my own patterns. I'm sure I will show you a little sneak peek of a dress that I'm working on to try and make it into a pattern that I can share with you all because dress patterns are something I've wanted to share for a long time because they're probably my favourite thing to make still. I forgot how much I love making dresses so I will show you that dress at some point within this video and I think I'm going to make some trousers. I bought a pattern from Merchant and Mills. Hopefully we'll be able to make them look good. I've got this gorgeous vintage French linen um, sheet that I was going to use for the fabric so I think they're going to look really good in that. This video is very kindly sponsored by Dematica and I've been using their personalised formula for just over a week now. I have my own little personalised formula. Um, you put in all of your skin concerns. For me it was acne and discoloration. Acne is quite a strong term for my spots but I know they're not covering my face and I'm very lucky for that. But I do have zones in my face that just keep breaking out and they, I just cannot get them under control. So I'm really excited to see if this helps. I feel like it's very easy to get overwhelmed with skincare products. Um, so when someone gives you the formula and tells you exactly how to do it, I like that. <laughs> so if you're not familiar with Dermatica already, their mission is to bring expert dermatology advice and evidence-based formulas to the accessible market. So a lot of the ingredients they use in their formulas you can't get over the counter, so it's meant to make them a lot more effective. And I'm very excited to see what happens to my skin. So this is how my skin is looking at the moment. I don't have any foundation or concealer on my skin. And I love that it's made my spots go down a bit. <laughs> Around my chin is definitely my problem area. The little tube may look tiny, but it does last you for 28 days. And within those 28 days, you can get advice from their professional dermatology team. If you have any issues with your formula, you can let them know and they will help you. And then after those 28 days, you can sort of reassess, see what your skin concerns are looking like then, maybe alter your formula. So that's the reason why it's this size. Um, I also think it's just a super handy size to have. I'm looking forward to seeing the results of this new skincare journey I'm on. If you guys would like to join me or if you're interested in the personalised formula then I will leave the links down below and you can also use my code ROSIE which gets you your first 28 day formula for only £2.90 um, and then after that you will get your second month with 10% off. I will be keeping you all updated on my skin. And yeah, I thought I'd show you my little routine that I've been doing. It's actually a very, very simple routine that I've now got, which I love. I used to have, I go through phases with my skincare and it goes from being like really complicated to really simple. And I do find that when it's a little bit more simple, sometimes it just looks better. So I'm just taking off any makeup and oil that's been on today. And then I just take one pump of my formula. That is all I need. Put it on my dry skin in the evenings and I only put it in the areas that it tells me to on all the information that you get sent with your personalised product. So there we go. I've applied the formula and then I just wait a few minutes and then I just put on a normal moisturiser afterwards and that is it. That is all I do for my evening skincare routine. And then in the morning, I just cleanse, moisturise, sun cream, that's it. <laughs> Very simple and I like that. I'm gonna head downstairs and make myself some dinner and I will catch up with you guys tomorrow. 
just been out to pick some dahlias this morning from our garden and we have our first Café au lait dahlia and I think it's my favourite that we've ever grown. Um, me and my mum both have some dahlias growing and hers have come out before mine. So I'm very jealous but she's letting me pick them so it's all good. <laughs> Today we are going to be making, attempting to make, some trousers. And this is the pattern I've got for them. It's the Quinn pattern from Merchant and Mills. And I've had this sitting, waiting to be made for a while now. So I'm very excited. I tried them on when I went to their shop in Rye. They have sort of samples of all of their patterns in, I'm not sure what size, I think it was a size 8 and it seemed to fit pretty well. So. If anything it was a bit too big which is very strange for me in a size 8. That does not happen. And then this is the fabric I have to make the trousers in. It's this really gorgeous thick linen cotton. I think it's mainly linen. Um, it's a vintage French flat sheet and it's just stunning and I have so much of it. And then I also picked up all the trimmings from Merchant and Mills because they have the best trimmings there and I've got some of these really nice sort of wooden looking buttons I'm not sure if they are wood and then I have this fancy thing that goes at the back but then I've also got these really stunning vintage buttons. So here's my fabric and then we've got buttons in the fastener and then this is the other possibility of button which is this cream one. I'm not sure if that makes it look a bit cheap actually so I think I'll save these for something else and I'll use these ones. Oh, I've got loads of those. Hmm, I think these came off, what did these come off? Possibly came off a duvet cover buttons, these really nice wooden ones. I guess I'll just think about that while I make them. Let's put this fabric away and start with the pattern. I've got so much fabric it seems silly to be restricted. pieces out and I've just ironed on the interfacing where it needed to be but I thought I'd share my little interfacing tip before I go and cut them all out. Interfacing can be quite tricky to cut out so I actually just cut a really rough shape around the pattern piece and iron it onto the piece with a bit of fabric that I don't care about on the bottom so that it can stick to that and then peel it off and then you can go and trim around the interfacing so I'm just doing that now, taking all of the excess interfacing off. So I don't know how much to show you guys and how much you actually want to see, so I think I'm just going to film little clips and then 
show you the end result, perhaps. Because I'm looking at this and I'm like, oh my goodness. So much to do. I think this is probably going to take me into tomorrow, for sure. <laughs> welt pockets on the back so I've got a piece of lining here I'm just going to pin that there the lining for the welt pocket is on the back and I've just sewn a little front facing bit on these pockets are a faff but they do look good once they're done Now we have the hole and we can put all of this through. And then you have a big hole. <laughs> okay, I'm going to go and press that open. First pocket is done. Pretty happy with that considering I haven't done a welt pocket since uni. Taking a pause from sewing my pockets for a second because I have a fabric delivery. This fabric is from a shop called the New Craft House and they stock dead stock designer fabrics and just other dead stock fabrics and trims and I've been following them on Instagram for a while and have nearly ordered things but this time I was like yes I am ordering that. After my second year at uni I did an internship over the summer at Amelia Wickstead and her fabrics and everything were just beautiful and I would sometimes be in charge of organising the fabric room that they had which was literally just floor to ceiling fabric and it was amazing but obviously sometimes these designer brands over order fabric for a collection and there are some that I have heard of that burn their fabric instead of sell it on which is obviously such a waste so I'm so glad that Amelia has done this and has put some of her fabrics out there to be resold. It doesn't say that they're Amelia Wicks there, but I just know that they are. <laughs> so here's the fabric, and it's in a polyester crepe fabric, but I thought I could make a really interesting evening dress at some point with this. Possibly in the autumn, winter time I could make it. I don't think I'll have time this summer to make like a summer event dress but the pattern is gorgeous and it's got a lovely baby pink base to it and this sort of fabric has such a good drape to it and then they also had tiny little matching sew through buttons so you literally just sew straight through them so I picked up a few of those I probably should have picked up a few more so yeah this is my new fabric and it's definitely a great place to check out for fabric if you are looking for nice fabrics they have a great selection on their website okay i'm gonna go back and sew the other welt pocket onto the back of the trousers stop sewing for the day it is six o'clock and I started at like 11 so I mean it's been a reasonably long day of sewing not that long I've just stitched the first parts of the pocket that go on the front and I did the buttonholes and I really hate sewing buttonholes they're probably my least favorite thing to do and so whenever I make garments for myself I pretty much always never have buttons in them because I just don't like them. <laughs> yeah they've turned out fine I just feel like I can never get them to a really high finish on a normal sewing machine because they obviously use buttonhole machines at um, in industry 
And when we were at uni we had a buttonhole machine that you could hand your garments in to the technicians and they would, you'd just mark out where you want your buttons and they'd go and do it for you. So I've never really sat and done it loads and loads and loads of times. So now I'm just going to sit here and unpick all the thread out of all these little buttons. I've decided to go with the smaller wood effect buttons because I just think they're so pretty. I think they go a bit better with the fabric and I can use the other ones if I make a dark pair of trousers at any point. So that is what I'm going to do now and I will either see you again in the evening or in the morning and we can finish them off then. It's the next morning and we are going to finish the trousers today. <laughs> it's currently raining outside which is not great for lighting but it makes such a cosy little atmosphere in the sewing room so I really love it. Hopefully it'll be nice and sunny tomorrow and I can try them on in the sunshine and get some nice shots of them. I think the next thing I have to work on is front pockets so I'm going to get started and update you when I've got somewhere with the pockets. So yesterday I finished the back panels of the trousers and I have the little welt pockets sewn in and they look really good and I also made these little tabs on each side. One will be stitched in with a bit of metal in it um, but I love how the pockets look. They just look so sleek and it's really good jog my memory of doing pockets like these so I'm very happy with that and I'm also loving this fabric I love the effect it gives Very satisfying. Oh. Oh, Woohoo! Right, next leg. We have two legs. <laughs> now I've just got to attach them together. The crotch. Trousers are nearly there. I just need to go and do the waistband and this little bit. Oh, and the pockets. I mean, buttons <laughs> of course so it's definitely going to take me until the end of the day again I think and I need to hem, hem as well so lots of little things to do still but they are looking pretty good front waistband and now I'll have to go and sew some more buttonholes. I finished sewing the buttonholes on the front. Now I'm going to, before I sew the buttons on, I just really want to attach this sliding thing because it just looks so fun. <laughs> so I need to figure it out because mine looks a bit different because they ran out of the one I actually needed. And now I'm just going to thread this other tab through. And there we go. Got a little slider at the back. Oh, I just think that looks so cool. And it's going to be really helpful if it's a little too big. Now I'm going to sit here and stitch on the buttons. I'm going to put something on my phone to watch while I do it. So that it's not too boring. I'm going to use these really gorgeous little wooden ones that I showed earlier in the video. I just think they're going to look so cool. I 
would just try them on and they were too big. Um, so I'm going to try them on again. I changed the placement of the button at the top and hopefully this thing at the back will help. So let's try them on. I'm kind of annoyed at myself that I didn't just make them in the size 6 because clearly their size 6 is basically a size 8. This is definitely more like a 10, like a big 10. So let me try them on. They are still quite big. Um, let's try cinching this thing in a bit more. Okay, that, that looks better now. Yay! Oh, nice! They're very summery. And I love the back. But on the whole, I'm very happy with that for not having made trousers in a long time. I'm very happy with them. I'm only a little worried about the back of them and how flattering they're going to be after sitting down a few times. Before I round the video up, I did want to show you a sneaky peek of the dress I made recently. Um, this is one that I want to start working on the pattern for. And let me tell you, it'll be a hell of a lot easier than these trousers were. <laughs> it's got this really nice gathered top section and an elastic waist. That's what the back looks like. So yeah, I'm excited to start working on this pattern. I've already digitalized it. I'm just working on the grading at the moment. Um, I'm gonna do it in three different sizes because it's got elastic in it. You can pretty much choose the fit. Um, I'm gonna do it in like small, medium, large, going from size six to 20. Um, so let me know if you guys would be interested in that because I'm currently working on it and uh, if it doesn't work, it will never appear. But if it does, then you guys will obviously know about it. And it has pockets, of course. Because we need to have some pockets on our dresses. Um, so yeah, that is the task for the next few days. If you want to see some photos of these trousers finished, then I'm sure I will have uploaded some onto Instagram. So you can head over and check that out if you want. Um, I will obviously leave links to the Merchant and Mills pattern down below, it's the Quinn pattern and I would definitely recommend sizing down. Like I am a classic size 8 and sometimes size 8 is even too small for me in trousers these days but I followed the size 8 pattern and it's far too big. <laughs> it's not way too big, it's just I've got the back fastening bit on like the tighter setting and I have to move the buttons so I would definitely size down. <laughs> I hope you guys are all having a wonderful day and I will see you in my next video. Bye!